Well, good evening, everybody. Is anybody there? Would anyone like to say hello this evening? My name is Rob, Rob Sowerby. I am the Director of Professional Courses at the London School of Business and Finance. And I'm here to discuss with you the following. So you've got your results. Oh, that wasn't very clever, was it? Would help if I had it on slideshow. What ineptitude I can show to you. There you go. It's supposed to look cool. Failed dismally, yes? So you've got your results. What next? Is that what everybody's here for today? Well, OK. So you had that trepidatious experience last night, this morning, something like that where you received your results. And what I want to do is to go through with a little bit of advice for you. Obviously, the advice will be general advice to kick off. Um, and of course, if you've got any specific questions, I would be delighted to hear from you. So, Masonda, hello. Jack, hello. Hassan, very nice to speak to you guys. OK. If you've got any questions, please ask me. It's a lonely, lonely place in this recording studio. So let's kick off and see what happens. Considerations for your delectation and delight. First of all, if you have passed, that'd be fantastic. Secondly, if you have failed. Thirdly, we're going to look at key milestones, i.e. specific points in your studies that are of particular interest. We're going to look briefly at exam paper strategy. Shouldn't be too difficult. And finally, we're going to roll up with mode of study. I don't know what, how you study at the moment, but we're going to look at the pros and cons of each and every one of those. So, if you have passed, congratulations. Well done, you. These are tough exams. The pass rates are not fantastic. You really must have made an effort. And the one thing I'm very, very keen on when it comes to any form of exam-based training, but in particular professional training where it's so tough, is getting that winning habit. Because the funny thing is, it's a lot easier to keep on passing than it is to turn it round. Okay? And so from that perspective, maybe it would be sensible even if you've passed, to go back and review what you did. What went well, what didn't go well. To look a little bit at the exam and think, well, hmm, I could do that and I couldn't do that. And maybe think back at the progress that you had during your tuition phase and think, well, OK, what could I have done better? What could I have done a little bit more of? Yes? There is always a sensible opportunity in life for a bit of reflection, yes? To look back in the past and think, well, that could have gone better. And let's adopt a little bit of reflection, even though we've done well, rather than we haven't done. What happens if you failed? If you failed, you won't be particularly happy, OK? I'm sorry. But the majority of people taking the exams at the ACCA fail. The first thing you've got to do is to accept it. Accept it not just at a superficial level, but accept it fundamentally. There's no point going on and on about what if. There is no point about saying, well, the examiner marked it wrong. They probably didn't. There is no point about getting it remarked. Can I tell you, I am aware of one person who have had their script materially remarked that has taken it from a fail to a pass, and that was a unique circumstance. OK? There are lots of checks and balances in place, and the simple fact is, if it is one about subtlety of language or something like that, the ACCA will not change their mind. OK? So, accept it. It's been, it's gone. It was a learning experience. So the second one is, learn from it. Say, well, OK, I didn't pass last time, but what 
did I not do right? Okay? Now, for some of us, it'll be obvious. It'll be, I didn't do enough work. I had too many distractions. Things like that. For others of us, it will be a little bit more sophisticated than that. They put lots of work in, but maybe you didn't work in the right way. Maybe you didn't maybe emphasise the things that you should have done. Maybe you did the easy bits because you could do those and you left off the topics that you didn't like. But we've got to come up with a new plan. There's no point in just doing more of the same. You've got to develop your skills. If your skills weren't good enough last time, you've got to say, well, OK, what skill am I going to have to be even better at to pass? Because let's think about it. Those people who pass, they're not massively clever. Yeah? Um, but they've done something that you haven't been able to do. Yeah? You're probably just as clever as they are, just as able in every way. Yeah? So you're going to think, well, OK, what was it that was the impediment to passing? Yeah? Think long and hard about that. And when you retake, you don't retake half-heartedly, you retake with confidence. You have done more, you have done better than what you did last time. Yeah? In essence, what you're saying is that the, the last attempt was your mock exam towards the proper attempt this time. OK? Yeah. Make sure you learn from this and make it positive. Remember, information like this is something that you can act upon. Treat it as information, treat it as something that you act upon and make sure that you get it right next time. So, accept it. Don't dwell on the past. You can't do much about the past. It's been and gone. Pass rates hover around 35 to 40 percent. In fact, they're lower on some papers. Yeah? And if that's the case, well, if it's 35 percent, we're seeing that for every three people who enter the exam, two are likely to fail. So you're not alone. Learn from it. Why did it happen? Be honest with yourself. Did you spend enough time studying? What will you do differently next time? And yes, absolutely fundamental. You must change. There is no option. You must do something different. Otherwise, you will simply come to exactly the same impasse next time. OK? Is everybody happy with that idea? I'm going to take that as a yes. OK? Right. Develop your skills. So, if we're going to develop our skills, what sort of things could we consider? Thanks, Jack. Good on you. Yeah? Firstly, the mode of study. How do you intend to study? Secondly, the simplest of things, time management. Now, there's two aspects to time management. Managing your time before the exam and managing your time in the exam. OK? Thank you, Mari. That's a great name you've got there. OK? Be careful of distractions, yeah? Be careful of distractions. And think about how you are studying. You see, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if you think about it, um, ha have you ever formally thought how you're going to study things? Or has your life been a bit like me, in so much as you sort of shamble along day by day, week by week, month by month and year by year. And all that really happens is that you end up a little bit fatter and a little bit greyer. Yes? Well, you're probably not at that age yet. Yeah? Um, what you've got to do is think about exactly how you intend to go about this rather than just letting it happen. OK? So. Oh, did I say before? If you are unsuccessful, you must change. And the funny thing is that if you change your mode of study and you start taking it a little bit more seriously, a little bit more seriously, you will enjoy it more. You will have learnt the skill of learning and passing exams. 
And that skill is universal to any paper you may do from F1 to P7. So, the first thing I'd better observe is that if you were unsuccessful, don't skip the paper. Let's say you were unsuccessful on F5, yeah? What's the point in going to F6? Is F5 going to go away? No, it's not. So retake the one that you've done before, yes? Confront it head on. There's no point trying to sort of sidle past it because that's not going to make any difference whatsoever. You retake that one because, first of all, you should know something about it. Secondly, you don't want to be in denial. You know, F5. Ugh. Although sometimes I know when you can say that. It's got to be your key focus. This was the one that was your bugbear. Let's just nail it. Let's just get it out of the way. Yeah? Confront the paper and bring it under your control. Yes? You're the one in control and not it. Is that fair? Yeah? So, let's move on. We've talked about whether you passed or whether you did not pass. That's fine. Okay? Now let's just consider a few key milestones for you to consider. Firstly, you may be completing foundation, F1, 2 and 3. Now if that's the case, skills papers are different. Okay, so you're getting on to F4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, we've got to be slightly careful here because skill papers may be different but F4 is now CBE, computer-based. But F4 certainly does require different skills anyway. Um, and I think you could accept that it's a step above F1 to 3. Yeah. Um, the other issue about skills paper is that they all, or almost all, have objective testing now. Um, but they also have longer questions. 10 markers and 15 markers. And so there's a different skill to what you have to do. It's not just picking C, yes, but you've actually got to get something down for the examiner. Hmm, very interesting this. When we get onto skills papers, there's more application than knowledge. What do you think I mean by application rather than knowledge? Any thoughts from you guys? Come on, Jack, give it a go. Mari, come on. I'm trying to work out, Mari, if, if, that's, your, uh, if, if that's your birthday, but I, it means you're 726 years old. Yeah. So maybe not. What do I mean by application rather than knowledge? Maybe that question is too difficult for this time of the term and the night. What we're saying here is knowing something is not enough. Instead, what we have to do is to know something, yeah, have that nugget of knowledge, and given that we've got that nugget of knowledge, we've then got to do something with that knowledge. Okay? Secondly, completing F6. F6. How can that be a key milestone? Well, OK. Once you've completed F6, that is now the point at which you must decide whether to opt in for the Oxford Brooks degree. Yes? Or should I put it more carefully, I think the ACCA have got upset with the amount of people complaining about this, so you have the option to opt out at that point in time. OK? Moving on, completing the skills papers. So, OK, we're moving up a bit. We've done F1 to 3, that's foundation. We've done F4 through to F9. You've completed F9. Yeah? Um, what changes? Well, again, the professional core, that's P1, P2, P3, are different. Firstly, there are professional marks. What we mean by this is that there are marks that are set aside 
for the quality of your work that goes beyond just answering the question. So, for example, the depth of argument may be that much more important, or the quality of advice that you give, or something of this nature. So, it makes it different. Now, here we say more analysis than application. Now, we were rubbish with the last one, weren't we? So I'll help you with this one. Application was saying we take that nugget of knowledge and we apply it to a scenario. Now, normally, application, when we're looking at it in terms of ACCA, is all about doing some numbers. Is that OK? Banging out a computation. So what's this analysis lark? What happens with analysis? Well, OK, we've done the numbers, that's fine. We've done the application. What we want to do with the application is, given that we've got those numbers, we want to talk about them. We want to discuss them. We want to compare them. We want to contrast them. We want to analyse them. OK? So what we find is that foundation is quite often about knowledge. Skills is mostly about application. And the professional level is about the analysis based on that application. Is that fair? So we're slowly building our skills here. And as we go through, we have to appreciate that there are different skills that we must show the examiner. OK? Chunkier questions. Yes, I couldn't think of a better way of saying that. But the questions tend to be bigger. OK? And so it's not just a relatively brief 10 or 15 marker. We may be getting a 25 or even a 30 mark question here. And bear in mind that a 30 mark question is almost an hour of your time, an eon in the exam hall. OK? And then once we've uh, completed the professional core, P1, P2, P3, we're on the, the home straight now. We're on the home straight. We're nearly finished. And given that we've nearly finished, we've got to look at the professional options. Yeah? And if we look at the professional options, oh, we have to choose. Now, we've got a whole session on choosing the options later. If you want to come and join me for that one. Yes? Thanks for that enthusiasm. Right. Um, you have to choose. Now, if you're choosing, you've got four papers, P4, P5, P6, P7. And yes, I mean, there's a whole science about this. Well, not really. You can either go the, uh, the, um, the practitioner route and go for P7 and P6, uh, P6 or you can go for the in industry route and go for P4, P5. Or, as the vast majority of students go, you go for the two that you found most interesting, that you're most likely to, in inverted commas, enjoy. Yeah, see my video on that. It's exciting stuff. So, these are your key milestones, things that you have to be aware of as you go through. Yeah? Make sure that you pick up on them. Oh. <laughs> And just in case you're a past finalist, get a life, OK? There's no reason for you to be talking to me at all. Go out and enjoy yourself. Go out and do what, whatever you do uh, to celebrate, be it live face down in a pile. No, I can't even say that. Or whatever you intend to do. Some of you may be thinking, well, OK, I passed a paper. Which one do I do next? So, let's look at a, a few exam paper strategies for you. The first exam paper strategy is follow the numbers. You know, five comes after four, six comes after five, seven comes after six, yes? Does that sound like a logical approach to you? Well, I must say, if you can't think of any other compelling reason, there is a lot of sense in doing this. Because by following the numbers, you're never ever going to get into a tizzy about things. Okay? But some of us get a little bit more ex uh, um, excited. So the key about following the numbers is that you make sure that you have the necessary prior knowledge because that will have been sorted out by the ACCA. 
And also you have to do them. There's no point trying to avoid a nasty one. Why don't you just confront it, look it straight in the eye and give it a go? Right, the second logic is what I've described as mix or match. So the logic here goes, you either mix or you match computational with discursive. So when you look at the papers, and I suppose really we're looking at the skills level here, you've got to decide, well, are they a numbers paper or are they a talky paper? Okay. So what you could do is mix them. So F4 law and F5 performance management, one's numbers and one's talky. F6 and F8. So F6 is tax numbers. F8 is um, talky about the nonsense associated with audit. Uh, F7 and F9. Well, you've sort of run out of the talky bits by there. So F7 is financial accounting and F9 is financial management, but they're the last two you've got to do. P1 and P2. P1 is all about ethics and P2 is all about advanced financial accounting. And P3 and P4, if you decide that option, P3 is business strategy, very much a talky paper, and P4 is advanced financial management, very much a numbers paper. Uh, please note when I say very much a numbers paper, by the time you get to the high end of ACCA, everything is pretty talky, whether you like it or not. If we wanted to match them, maybe this is a different way of going about it. So we're doing similar sort of things in a particular sitting. So F4, F8, they're both very much written papers. Or sorry, there are no numbers in sight because F4 is now computer based. So maybe they make sense for you to do the discursive papers first. Um, and F6 and F7, those are the statutory papers. They're statutory in so much as there's just lots to learn, but there's no real decision making to do, okay? You simply have to regurgitate the factual knowledge together with the computations. F5 and F9, well these are the decision making type of papers where the questions may differ a bit. So maybe there's a little bit less to learn than the statutory papers, but at the same stage there's a little bit more application issue with those sort of subjects. And then P1 and P3, maybe they're both discursive papers, you could put them together, and P2 and say P6 may be run together. So, just a suggestion of how you may wish to match them. So, if I were to ask you guys, what would you tell me? Would you say that it's a mix that you would do or a match that you would do? What, what, what would you rather do here? A mix or a match? Jack wants to mix it. Okay, there's a certain logic to that, a bit of variety to what you do. Yes? Anybody else? Well, it's very much horses for courses. Okay, John wants to mix it. Okay, yeah? Um, yeah, uh, there is no right answer to this, but I'm just suggesting the sort of things that you may do. Yeah? Okay. Or we can use the follow through technique. Yes? Follow three. Oh, and Mari, you want to mix it as well. Everyone's a mixer. Okay, that's good. Okay, no matches, but lots of mixing. Then we come across my follow through technique. Now, I don't know what that really means, but it was trying to get a point. Uh, what is my suggestion? I have not got a suggestion on things like this, Mari. You have got to make your own decision. I can simply give you the alternatives. Okay? Of course, my suggestion is that the only important subject is F9 because that's what I teach. Yes, I know, I'm sorry about that. Right, so moving on to follow through. What I meant by follow through was this. Use your prior knowledge before you forget it. Because of course, if you've been listening to me, you'll have noticed that there are certain subjects that come up again and again and again. So management accounting comes up again and again. F2, F5, P5. Financial accounting comes up again and again. F3, F7, P2. 
and so on and so forth, tax, and they all come up again and again. So maybe we could say, well, if you've got prior knowledge, if you know something, you want to use that knowledge before you forget it. Yeah? So here we go, F2 links to F5, F3 to F7, F7 to P2, P2 to P7, and others. So you may want to do those quickly, yeah? But the trouble is, if you start looking at this too, uh, too carefully, you will appreciate that there are certain limitations to how much you can do this, because if you do F7 quickly after F3, then you can't do P2 quickly after F7, okay? But you may decide to adopt this if a particular circumstance arises, if that makes sense to you, okay? Follow the tutor. Okay, follow the tutor. You never know how long your tutor is going to last before he falls apart, so pick the tutor you like best. Yes, we've got loads of very well-known tutors on our team, and as a result, you may wish to just pick the subject of the tutor you like best. Okay? So, use a star tutor. Yeah. Whilst you know you can. And what about the day of the week? I mean, let's get down to the most basics. You are studying, and it's possible that you'll be studying either class-based or on an online course. And the most important thing is that you've got snooker night on Tuesday, and therefore you know you don't want to study on Tuesday, you'll study on Monday or Wednesday or Thursday. Yes? I mean, you, I mean, I obviously don't have, but you guys may actually have a social life. And you may... <laughs> Yes, OK, fair enough. I mean, you do appreciate the logic of ACCA, don't you? Yes? You do appreciate that the reason why your companies sponsor you to do ACCA is because in doing ACCA, you do lose the whole of your social life. Yeah? Um, you lose your friends and family as they slowly drift away. Yeah? And by the time you're qualified as an ACCA, you have no friends, no family left. And so... You, all you're going to do for the rest of your life is work hard. Yes, that's the reason why the company sponsors you. I don't know if you appreciated that logic. I, I shouldn't really be sharing you with the biggest secret, should I? Um, but the day of the week may be important to you. So, exam paper strategy, as you may have noticed, Mari, uh, I don't have an opinion here, because everybody does their own thing, yeah? I'm just suggesting strategy that you may decide, okay? So, make your timetable fit. So finally, we move on to the mode of study. Okay, the mode of study. Now, I don't know, what, what, how are you guys studying at the moment? How are you guys doing at the moment? Jack, how do you study? John, Mari, Masonda. I think my connection is a bit slow today, or may maybe I'm waking you up and that takes a while. Sorry, it's uh, one of those issues. Yeah. Mostly in the library, online, part-time. Okay, right. So, so Jack, are you doing a home study effectively? Yes, are you doing it from books? That's a brave choice. That's what I did. That's what gave me grey hair. Yeah. You're going to start part-time, Mario. Okay, so you're right at the beginning. Well done. So, the first mode of study, home study. Yeah? It's definitely doable. As I said a moment ago, I did home study. Looks like Jack did home study. Yes, or library study from Jack's perspective. Um, you can study at home without distraction. That was my view. And it is cheaper. That was also my view. I certainly agree with that. Um, Problem, do you have the motivation to keep going? And would it be easier to get some guidance? Yeah? So I'll let you into a secret, everybody. I mean, okay, the exams were slightly different, but what I did was I studied on my own with a book, yeah, the most deadly dull experience in the world, yeah? Um, until I got to the final stage and I thought, I've had enough of this, I'm gonna bash through. I went to a course and I don't know if it's good or bad, but uh, uh, that course led me into teaching. Yes, I'm not quite sure if it's good or bad. If you ask my students, they'd probably say very poor indeed. Yeah? Um, 
I'd definitely say it would make it easier getting some guidance. You know what is important and what's less important. Okay. Class space, full time. Now, this is a bit of a luxury, I think, for a lot of us. Logic, you study during the day and get a longer time to master the subject. Okay, so we have full-time classes, a lot of people have full-time. Um, the issue is, <laughs> most of us have to work, don't we? We've got to work for a living, and this is not an option. Yeah. But, some people find that full-time works uh, if they are able, if, a major if for some of us, uh, you're able to negotiate it with your bosses at work. Um, maybe you do some sort of share where you share your days in some shape or form or salary sacrifice or something like that. It does work full time. Yeah, you have more time. But most of us, I think that is a bit of a luxury. Class-based part-time, okay. This is the traditional mode for most people in work. And typically you've got a weekend or an evening, yeah. You study during weekends and evenings, fitted around normal working hours. So, you either come here for full days at the weekend on Saturdays or Sundays, or you study from 6.15 in the evening to 8.45 in the evening. It's fun, 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 fun. Yes? Um, issues. Often it means a bit of travelling after work to get to the venue. And then, of course, you've got to travel home after that. And the days are fixed, and so if you have even a modicum of social life, you're going to be a bit stuck, okay? But it's a very common study method, okay? So Murray, you're doing the evenings, yeah? Online. Well, what do I mean by online? I've made two distinctions here, online and live online, yeah? Well, the issue about online is that it takes us a little bit further than home study, you know? So we've got Jack there in the library with his book. He opens the book and reads it, you know? But the idea about online is we try and bring it to life with a bit of video content, okay? I will say, I mean, we, we were the first organisation to put ACCA on video. We did that eight years ago, seven and a half, eight years ago, yeah? Um, and we learnt a lot from that. We're on iteration four now, so we're way down the line. We've, we've certainly learnt how it works. And I will say that people like it. I mean, it works, works very well as a, a tuition package. Yes. Uh, the issue, of course, is that you're still on your own, very much like the book, but hopefully the quality of the description is that much better than you would get from just reading the book. Okay? So, you marry the best bits of all the other modes of study, you gain discipline of a timetable, recorded product and interaction without leaving home. Well, okay. I think I've got those the one, wrong way round. The top one should be the live online. Are we, are we going to, I apologise to everybody there. Sorry about that. So the live online product is, well, can I just let you into a secret? I don't know, John, is this what you do, John? Live online? Yeah? What we do is we have a timetable for you on the live online and that means that very much like you did uh, your evening or your weekend course, you log in to do your live online. Yeah? And this is what you see. Okay? I'll even wear a tie, you see? Um, the issue about live online is that we do what we would do in the classroom and we'd ask you questions. Yeah? Um, and you can answer those questions if you want. Thanks, John. You see you're doing it here. And so you get the full interaction that you would get in the classroom. And to me, it's even better than that, because if for any reason you can't turn up, you can still watch the recorded product, because whatever we do live is also recorded, so you could do that as well. Yes? And so to my mind, this is the future for a lot of people. And then of course you've just got your online itself. Okay. So in summary, what have we got? You've just got your results. I hope you've been successful. Obviously, if you have any issues and you'd like to bring them to my attention, feel free to do so. But in summary, understand your goal. Ah, you see, John, you're doing the pre-recorded lectures. Yeah. Okay. So you've, you, you're doing the, the, the pre-recorded and they work 
okay, they, they certainly work as a product, yeah? Okay, understand your goal. It's a pretty simple goal. You've got to score 50 something percent in the paper, yes? And if you score 50 something percent, you move on to the next one, the next one, and the next one, and sooner or later, you will be qualified. Sooner or later, you will have those letters behind your name. Sooner or later, you can stop listening to people like me and get a life. And sooner or later, they may even pay you a salary that you deserve. Okay? Good. Hi, Mina. Okay. So, understand your goal. Think about how you intend to achieve it. It's not just going to happen. You have to make it happen. We just found out that John here, he's saying that pre-recorded lectures work for him. But I'm guessing, John, that that means you're a bit of a self-starter because pre-recorded lectures without someone to kick you to do them means that you have to do them yourselves and get yourself organised. Am I right? Yeah? It's doable. Yeah, but a lot of us need a bit of kicking, don't we? Yes? Or at least a gentle prod. Yeah. So think about how you intend to achieve it. And start now. I mean... Where are we looking at? We, we, we know when the exams are going to happen. The exams are going to be in the first week of June. Yeah? Um, and we've got Outlook, so what we can do is we can plug into Outlook what we're going to do between now and June to make sure that it's successful. Yeah? Get organised. Yeah? Something that we will talk about in another one of these presentations is how you make sure that your motivation leads to an end result. And it's pretty simple, but one of the fundamental points is to be organised. If you organise yourself, then, even when things aren't going particularly well, you do appreciate that your direction of travel kept working. There is no substitute for doing something. Yeah? You know what we do, we all faff, we wait, we think, uh, yeah, just get on with it and do. Yeah? And all I can say is the very best of luck to you. If you have any issues, yeah, get them resolved. All I've tried to do tonight is to give you a little flavour of the sort of things that you have to consider given that you've got your results. We've got a series of these lectures running over the next few evenings, yeah, and if you're at all interested in our live product, I think we're streaming live from very soon, I think in a couple of days' time, which will allow you to look at the sort of things that we did last term. And remember, it's a teaching product. What we're trying to show you is not something that's glossy, because you can't do glossy for two hours on a, on a stint. We're trying to show you excerpts of how we went about teaching and revising subjects for you. Okay? So, guys, over to you. Do you have any questions for me? Any questions? Come on, ask me a question. I've been on my own. It's all really sad here. There's me and a box in the corner. Fantastic. Okay, well done, Mina. Uh, I don't know if it was me last time, because some of you may not know that I didn't do much in the way of teaching last term because I managed to break both arms. Yes, because I'm stupid enough to be a cyclist. Okay. John. Okay, well, good luck, John. Just get on with it and see what you can do. Yes? So, Mina, you probably should be thanking Joel, the one with the beard, because he was the one that took over from me. Is that right? Yeah? Or are you talking about, ah, John, you passed F3 already. That's right. Nail it. Get it out of the way. Fantastic. Okay. But it really is a case of getting in there and being aggressive and trying really hard to get something. Okay, you see, Joel, yes? But I think you'd ag admit, uh, Mina, that Joel's not as good looking as me. Isn't that right? Yeah? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Wazi. That's very kind of you to everybody. Yes, of course, congratulations. Congratulations are always in order for anyone who passes. Okay? As we said, 
you're one out of three, aren't you? Yeah, think of the pass rates, quite often around 35%. Yeah? Oh, Mina, you could tell me, don't worry, I wouldn't tell anyone, anyone but Joel himself. <laughs> right, okay. So has anyone got any questions, any specific questions from me? Well, as I say, we're doing a series of these presentations. I can't really say too much more tonight on the basis that there's going to be even more excitement as we go forward over the next few days. Yes? I, I'm doing a few of them, so I, I really hope to see you guys again soon. But if that's that, I think we've, we've, we've wrapped it for the night, haven't we? Is everyone done? Thank you very much for being there. Basil. Hassan, Misonda, Jack, Mari, John, wow, uh, Mina, and Wazi, yes? Thank you very much indeed. Yeah? Please make the right choices. Yeah? If you've got any further questions and you want to contact me, it's very easy to do it through Study Interactive, no problem. Everybody knows who's, who I am. I do appreciate I didn't put my name here, which is not very clever but I shall do that for the next one. What are you all planning for your June 15 sittings? What are you sitting, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Well, the very best of luck to everybody. Um, I'm going to leave it there, if that's okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye now.